Hey guys, Joyce and Anthony, aka JJ. Day three is all about the fill. While in draw mode, I'm gonna change it to my favorite, the ink pen, and I'm going to go down to the data tab. There's the default lines and fill, so I'm gonna go to the material properties tab, and here is the solid stroke, but I wanna fill that in. One option you have, well, you can just go straight to the fill but I'm going to add a new by pressing the plus and I'm going to select the stroke and the fill. I'm just going to change the thickness or radius settings. And I'm going to draw the triangle again. What's cool is even if I don't close it, it will still create a fill at the bottom. That is one way to fill in a stroke. So I'm gonna erase this. I changed the eraser from dissolve to stroke just to erase faster. Now we're gonna play with the settings inside the fill. I'm going to select the paintbrush, which is the fill brush. Okay, I'm clicking the material tab and I'm gonna select a new color I'm going to unselect the stroke because for this example I just want the fill selected okay I'll just use yellow color I guess yellow mustard color I'm gonna color inside my triangle under the style of the fill you can change the color from solid to let's try gradient I'm gonna fill in my square with the gradient, you have the base color and then the secondary color that you can change. There are two types of gradient styles. I'm going to stick with linear for now. Let me scroll down. You can also change the or flip the colors. You can change the blend amount. The X and Y location, rotation, and X and Y scale can all be adjusted. These are the settings I ultimately ended up with. We're gonna play with more fill settings and I'm gonna add rectangles from these shapes that we are given. Now that those are drawn, let's go back to the paintbrush, the fill. At the top of the fill layer, you have precision, dilate slash contract, and then thickness. Precision. Factor for fill boundary accuracy, higher values are more accurate, but slower. So the higher this number, the more accurate it's going to be filled in. Dilate slash contract number of pixels to expand or contract fill area. I'm going to increase the number. The higher the number, it seems to expand it. So I guess that means if you make it negative, it will shrink it. Finally, I'm going to play with the thickness, which changes the radius of the brush and pixels. And to do that, I'm just going to draw my rectangles again. I'm going to put my settings back to what they were originally to see if we see any change with the thickness. Hmm. I want to see how high I can make the thickness go because I'm not seeing much of a difference. It mm, goes up to 500. Okay. Not seeing much of a difference. I need to play more around with thickness. Now we are going to go over the gap closure. So I'm drawing this heart, but oh, I forgot to close the bottom. And of course, when I go into 
fill it, it's gonna give me this error message at the bottom, unable to fill unclosed areas. Go to advanced and make sure you're like, have the paintbrush selected, cause if you're in stroke, this won't appear. Go to gap closure. And gap closure lines are automatic temporary lines that help to close the gaps on the strokes. The number I just had didn't work, so I'm going to increase it. It goes all the way up to 10. Let's try eight. Let's see how that does. Nope. So I'm gonna just increase it again to 10, which is the highest again that it goes. And again, the higher you increase it, the longer these lines get, which sometimes this is the effect, which obviously that's not what I wanted. I wanted my whole heart to be fill, filled, excuse me. Sometimes this does happen even with the gap closure. There's still, as you can see, an obvious white space. So I'm just going to, I was just trying one more time. That's my layer and I'm gonna go, I just had another layer under my ink or under my stroke layer and I'm just gonna fill in the heart by hand. I wanted to draw a triangle and do this again. Cause as you can see, there's obvious gap closures. I just wanted to see if this would do it. Unable to fill, okay. So now I am still in the fill and I'm holding down option. It helps me draw these little lines to help close the stroke. I just wanna see if this will work. Let me draw it again. I'm gonna close all the lines. Okay, well, it's filled. Okay, I'm gonna do it because there I'm gonna um, select the layer under it because again, you can color on top of the layer, but I just wanna color this one under it because I wanted more of the the stroke lines to, sh to show. Guys, we are learning together. <laughs> that leads us to challenge number three. Try to recreate the first two images that you see on the left and in the center. And in the image on the far right, what do you suggest I do? How can I fill it in when there's two gaps? You can pause the video right now to give you time to complete the challenge. To show you what I came up with, the first image I use gradient. I'm going to the material and right there, gradient linear. And I actually flipped the colors. This is what it was originally like. So I flipped it and the, I call it a kite, my two kites. I just filled it in with the, the sky blue and the green. And for my friend on the I'm gonna use that. I'm going to try, let me turn on advance. See how the gap closure, okay, it's at 10. Let's see if I do that. Unable to fill, okay. So again, I'm gonna hold down option. I'm using a Mac, so your settings might be a little bit different. Holding down option, now I'm gonna try. Okay, so that's what I did for the third one. Hopefully you guys are a little bit more comfortable with the fill in Blender. See you in lesson number four. This is Joyce and Anthony, AKA JJ.